It's the end of 2014 in Western Libya, the year when the country descended into civil war. Ajmir Alatri leads these troops from the city of Zintan. They were fighting against Islamist groups who had seized Libya's capital, Tripoli, the move that triggered the year-long conflict. Libya was left destabilized, with several governments all claiming legitimacy. Today, the Zintan fighters, including Ajmi Alatri, have returned to base. Their battles are mainly administrative, for now. If there is a new war tomorrow, as the legitimate army under the authority of parliament, we will fight against the Islamists, who are just armed groups operating outside the law and helped by the Muslim Brotherhood. Ajmi Alatri is famous for capturing Saif al-Islam, the son and chosen heir of Colonel Gaddafi. This footage shows a meeting between the two men in 2011. Ashmi held on to his prisoner for five years. Then, astonishingly, he set him free. You want me to tell you where he can be found? Uh, well, that's another question. According to Libyan law, Saif is free and he is somewhere on Libyan territory. Ashmi Alatri has even gone as far as allying himself to the Gaddafi heir. You know what? I think that two-thirds of the Libyan people favor the former regime, and the other third is nostalgic for the way we lived before. Saif al-Islam can have a leading role in reuniting the Libyan people. He alone is capable of reuniting the supporters of the former regime and those who were part of the revolution. Saif can unite the Libyan people. Could this nostalgia really exist, even among the thousands of young people who rose up against the Gaddafi regime? A good person to ask would be Ibrahim al-Madani, a figure of the revolution and a spokesman for the young people of Zintan. Do you want to know the truth? Life under the former regime was better than it is today. When we were fighting the revolution in 2011, we wanted to change things. We wanted better for our country. A visit to the Zintan Revolution Museum underlines Ibrahim Almadani's point of view. This place marks the first clash between Gaddafi's supporters and the revolutionaries. Ibrahim's father was a Libyan military leader who went over to the side of the revolution. He was killed by Gaddafi's forces and is still well respected in Zintan. Those are the names of the martyrs, and that's the name of my father. My father said that we were protesting Gaddafi not because we hated him, but because we were fighting the corruption of his regime. Now the revolution must continue because the corruption we see today is worse than what we experienced under the former regime. Despite the success of Zintan's fighters in bringing down the Gaddafi regime, the city lost more than a thousand to revolution and war. Every family here knows people who were killed, some more than others. Since 2011, Massoud has lost 15 members of his tribe, including three of his sons. My son Nordin fed in the first battle in Kashaf. The Gaddafists took his body to Tripoli to say that NATO had been bombing innocent people. The remains of my son were never seen again. The Gaddafists never returned his body. His two other sons were both killed in street battles between militia in Tripoli long after victory against Gaddafi. My son fought so that Libya could become a democratic country. But all this corruption, terrorism, unruled by militia, my son could never have imagined Libya would turn out like that. 
The majority of Zintan's military leaders have come together under the authority of Marshal Khalifa Haftar to fight against the Islamist groups. Haftar's Libyan National Army brings together revolutionaries with former officers from the Gaddafi regime. They operate along this road between Zintan all the way to the gates of Tripoli. This police captain started his career under Gaddafi, but now commands a platoon of former revolutionaries. Any lingering differences have been forgotten, and now the soldiers of this army want to appear as the only legitimate fighting force in the country. The leader of the Libyan army is Khalifa Haftar, but we are the police force. We are called the special force, and we are under the authority of the interior ministry. Of course, we work together. We finish what the army starts. Like much of the rest of Libya, this brigade has a complicated history. Before being integrated into the Libyan National Army, these men were part of the Sawa militia, a powerful group from Zintan. The UN has accused Saudi Arabia of arming them and of breaking sanctions on Libya by providing the group with these armoured cars, which are clearly being put to good use. You're really drawing attention to yourselves with that car? Yes, Chief. This car you can see is a model we call Nimr. It's a vehicle that we use in the desert to set up checkpoints. That's because it's hard to maneuver in the desert and we're surrounded by it. It's the same when we go to Wershefana and up to Al Haraba. We often have to make an off-road checkpoint, taking into account the security situation in the country today. Egypt and the Arab Emirates have decided to throw their support behind anti-Islamist forces in Libya. That responsibility is almost entirely carried by Marshal Haftar and his National Libyan Army, seen here in a propaganda video. These images of well-armed crack troops fail to take into account the ongoing UN sanctions. At the barracks of Brigade 217, the soldiers parade empty-handed. They say the army is woefully underarmed. Our biggest problem since 2011 has been weapons sanctions. We can't buy them anymore. They forbid us from buying new weapons, so we have to use old ones. It's a big problem. These officers say the decision by Western countries to enter into the Libyan conflict in 2011 was a disaster. NATO's big mistake was to hit the military camps and go about destroying the Libyan army. It's one of the principal causes of the situation that we're in today. These soldiers are now keen to bring the army back together as a unified, reliable force. A military happy to accept anyone among them and at the service of the Libyan people. Their furthest position lies at the small town of Al Azizia, 40 kilometers southwest from the capital. Captain Farhat Ali leads the visit. Come, I will show you the logo of our brigade. We're soldiers, you understand? You won't see a single militiaman on the side of the road. Get in that car with the machine gunner. Here we are in Al Azizia, next to the sports center. We're on the road that links the Nufusa Mountains to Tripoli. This region, southwest of Tripoli, is known for its instability, with frequent reports of violent kidnappings. Passing drivers make sure to tell the soldiers what they've seen along the road. 
Are you relieved to get to Al Azizia? In the town next to the stadium and at the checkpoint, it's OK. But just before getting over here, there was a guy shooting. So now I'm definitely more at ease. I feel reassured. But it's almost enough to have a heart attack. Residents of Al Azizia city continue to support the former Gaddafi regime. Soldiers still wear the Gaddafi insignia of a green shield with a golden eagle. Some of them still use the Gaddafi salute. The revolution never really took root here among the soldiers, nor the city residents. The Libyans now understand that Libya is being sold off and that the revolution was a trap set by foreigners. All the Libyans want now is to have a stable and secure life. Another Gaddafi salutes before leaving. What does this salute mean? Hey, don't do that. Hang on, doing the salute is natural to us. It's in our blood. No, no. That greeting is obligatory. It's in our blood, I said. Hey, stop that. Stop saying that. It's no joke for this colonel leading the brigade. These men, supported by Marshal Hafter's troops, soon hope to retake Tripoli. They will have to get as much support as possible including from those who lost friends and family to the Gaddafi regime. People like Massoud in Zintan, who lost three sons to war, but still has others. We gave the blood of our children. They became martyrs so that we would have democracy, so that we would have human rights. Those were the great ideals of the revolution. If the country falls into the hands of a military junta, it's as if all our sacrifices have been for nothing. All of Massoud's remaining five children are civilians. They celebrated and suffered alongside the revolutionaries. Soon, they may have to fight themselves. If the tribe council asks us to go to war against the Islamists, or if we have to defend our town, we will go as willing martyrs. If they have to, my children will go to war. The future for Zintan remains uncertain, as it does for the rest of Libya. Alliances are being built in preparation for a new conflict. One in which the revolutionary city of Zintan could once again play a major role. <laughs>